Senator Booker Harvey Elwood, Channel 12, Orangeburg, South Carolina. Tell us about the significance of the night and all the work you guys are doing here in Washington, if you will. Well, first of all, my shout out to everybody in South Carolina. I'm looking forward to getting down there. I want to give my best to Betty Henderson. She is the soul of our country really critical to our future and of course uh, Congressman Clyburn uh, who was my leader in the Congressional Black Caucus so South Carolina keep holding it down and I appreciate you and a lot of South Carolina here folks from all over the country right here in Washington DC for the Congressional Black Caucus now this is the conscience of the Congress and really representing millions and millions of Americans of all backgrounds as well as African Americans and this is our annual gathering where we talk about the pressing issues of our time the urgent policy that we need uh, to put in place and the fight that we have to take back to our communities, our neighborhoods, our counties, our towns. 2018 is a big, big year. 2018 is a really big year for elections. This November, what are we looking at down the road? Well, you know, this is uh, important in South Carolina, up and down the ticket, all across our country, up and down the ticket. We need to take back state houses, state legislators. We have critical governor's races from uh, Georgia with Stacey Abrams to Gillum in Florida. We have important uh, uh, congressional races that are necessary, essential to check Donald Trump. We need to take back the House of Representatives because right now he controls the House, he controls the Senate. Uh, he's trying to control the Supreme Court. We need to check and balance that power. Like, what about state races, state houses, and council, county council, city council? Well, you know, as a guy who started as a city council person, was a mayor, our whole nation is built from the grassroots up. And if the Democratic Party does not have strong grassroots base, uh, then we are never going to have a strong nation. But more than this, People don't understand that state houses, your state legislators, they make up how we uh, draw congressional lines. Uh, they do things uh, like uh, gerrymandering. They're, they're passing legislation that is uh, discriminatory and impact against African Americans. We saw this in North Carolina. So those seats are important as well. No, no, those seats are essential. Okay. Those seats are essential, okay. not important. Right. Uh, essential, and that's why we all have to understand. We got to go out and vote from the top of the ticket to the bottom, bottom to the top. We we need your voice. And, and we all know, if you are here as an American, particularly an African American, people fought, struggled, sweat, bled, died for your right to vote. Don't insult our history uh, and, and in frank, frankly insult our future uh, by checking out of the process and allowing special interests, moneyed interests, allowing others to be able to dominate the system. We need your voice. Your, we need your vote. Uh, the opposite of justice is not injustice. It's apathy, indifference, inaction. This, this gathering is going to be a little technocratic. <laughs> and I say that because uh, we have to understand that there are some technical things going on in our communities that were by design to create pockets of poverty throughout our country. You, you have to understand that we have to start thinking constructively about our communities because ch economic changes continue to happen. And the headwinds are working against Americans as a whole, but African American communities in particular. The black-white wealth gap in America is worse, it has not been this bad since about 1972. In other words, years of making gains, we are now losing ground and not gaining. 55 years after the march on Washington, we know the dream still demands that we march and shout for justice. How important are these conferences? Is, 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 what are we getting accomplished here uh, this weekend? Well, uh, hopefully, uh, in addition to imparting information, and there's a lot to be imparted, uh, I will be doing a brain trust on environmental justice uh, to point out uh, exactly what's going on in communities and what may not be going on in communities in order to maintain uh, clean air, safe drinking water, uh, cleaning up uh, what we call browns fields. Uh, all of these things uh, in various uh, disciplines uh, will be taking place here. And I saw an awful lot of young people here this weekend, perhaps more young people than we've seen in, in recent times. Um, what do you attribute that to? Well, uh, uh, my Omega brothers decided several years ago uh, that they would undertake a fatherhood initiative, my brother's keeper initiative, uh, all of these male-oriented initiatives to do what we can uh, to lessen uh, our uh, deaths on the streets, uh, to lessen incarceration, uh, to lessen uh, those things that entrap uh, African American young people. And so that's what this is all about, making sure that we do our part 
uh, to try and get our young African-American men uh, engaged in the process in such a way we can begin challenging African-American women uh, for leadership uh, in civic orientation. We fight together for a policy agenda that benefits the interests of all of our constituents and ultimately all Americans. It's a very important meeting and convention. It's how we get our chance to not only network, but learn about different issues and be advised or educated. We also get a chance to celebrate people and give tribute. So I'm here as a guest. I'm very happy to be here as always. Many of these people are my mentors. I met them when I was doing my campaigning for Hillary Clinton, I'm one of her most traveled surrogates. And one of the things she was surrounded by were very strong women and very strong men who have not only contributed to not only her husband's candidacy, but twice her running and President Obama's candidacy and his leadership position as president. Right now, we're in a very interesting fix in America, but if anybody can fix it, it'll be the Congressional Black Caucus and certainly the black women in it. So with our black men who have been doing a really great job as well, I'll be there to help and thank you. We are the dream of a slave under lash and chain. We are the dream of a sharecropper who pushed their plow and hopes for a brighter day. We are the dream of the domestic, of the pulp and porter, of the Tuskegee Airmen, of the civil rights marcher. We are our ancestors' wildest dream. I think is, is, is always significant because it gets together black political leadership um, with people in the community. But I'd say that this year it's more important than ever, given the midterm elections that we are about to face, the administration that we have to oppose, um, and the strategy that we have to lay both to win in 2018 as well as in 2020. This is as important a black caucus gathering as has ever been. We stand with all of them, and we fight for opportunity. He was taking that opportunity to say that we have to start loving ourselves, and if we don't respect ourselves first, then you can't love. How can you love if you don't even respect yourself? So respect yourself, and once you respect yourself, then a lot follows from there. I think it's important that we understand that concept and that we seize the moment which is now which is to use this election as an opportunity to uplift our race, our people. Very impressive session, Omega Psi Phi fraternity, national organization, international actually, um, doing great work. Talk to us about the male initiative and uh, just, to, just to go into your comments a little bit more if you like. Okay. Well, we have several initiatives. Um, I used to also represent uh, President Obama out of the White House. And so when the president created an initiative focusing on fathers and young men, he created an initiative, the White House Fatherhood and Mentoring Initiative. So I spoke with the president and he said, you know, I need as much help as I can get. So I said, Mr. President, let me go to my fraternity and bring the force of our fraternity into supporting this work. We've got to amplify it because with the current policies and current uh, uh, legislation, the current intentional attack, you know, that's going on with our young black boys, we have to guide them along. We got to fight for them. We got to provide resources and services, and we got to also be very real with them to understand what are they up against in this society that literally rejects them. So, by our fraternity and many other organizations, everybody stepping up, understanding that we must, you know, lift up our young men is a part of why we do this work and why we must do this work. The celebration of our people, number one, is talking about uh, bringing uh, the political policies such as injustices to the forefront as addressing the injustices that are happening in our community. Our young people, don't let these obstacles discourage you. You keep doing it. You keep studying. You keep working. Somebody will see it. Somebody will see the headline. Say, come join me. Somebody will see the result of your work. Say, come join me. And together, you can make a tremendous success and make this world a better place. Godspeed.